Um, hi, welcome to the Investment and Business Club. Uh, so today we're just gonna start out with some with some questions um for this book. Um today we're not gonna review our homework because the homework was meant to be as like a kind of quick recap. Um so also, by the way, before we can start, because I almost forgot to mention, so like for this book, um, Peter, Peter Lynch has a lot of like ideas about the stock market, um, but it's important to like treat this book and like other books on the, on the stock market critically, because um, there's a lot of opinions about the stock market, and it's important to like, when you read a stock, a book about investing, to like, like, to like use critical thinking on like some of the author's opinions and decide if you like that opinion or not or you like that idea or not and whether or not you're going to use it in the stock market uh because many people like there's no right or wrong answer to the stock market or like right or wrong way like to invest it's just based on your opinions okay so according to peter lynch um Question number one, according to Peter Lynch, which company is better? A fine company with excellent management in a highly competitive and complex industry or like a humdrum company with mediocre management in a simple industry with no competition? So um, according to Peter Lynch, which company does you think is better? Chloe? It's a fine company with excellent management in a highly competitive and complex industry. Mm. Interesting, Chloe. Um, oh, yeah, Isabella, you have? Um, actually, I'm going to say the opposite of Chloe um, because he's, like, more of a chill guy and he's, like, already in the business, so he wants to be on the safer side. So I'd say a humdrum company. Great, Isabella. As a matter of fact, I think Isabella is more correct because Peter Lynch did say so. He preferred a humdrum company. But do you guys know what his reason is, though? Is it maybe because, like, um, there's not as much competition and um, since the uh, fine company with excellent management, has high competition in complex industry. Sometimes, the, like um, the events, the investor doesn't really understand what he's investing into, and then since there's also high competition, he might not like get a good share of it. Yeah, excellent, Valencia. So um, he has a lot. Of, he has a lot of reasons. Um, one of his reasons is that um, with a fine company with excellent management, even though it's a like fine company with excellent management it's in a highly competitive and complex industry um so like if a com if that company makes like the tiniest mistake or like a wrong decision in that industry then it it may result in really big losses for the company even though it may only be a really small mistake or wrong decision but with a humdrum company with mediocre management in the simple-minded industry there's like basically no competition. So even if it makes like some mistakes, that may not result in very large profits, according to Peter Lynch. Um, um but like and like with a fine with a fine company in the complex industry, if the manager or CEO of the company steps down and retires and like there's another CEO, um then like the manager might not be that good. And like that may result in like really big losses for that company because it's a really competitive industry. Um and like or it may result in being cut C. Um so when he has to choose between NVIDIA and, and Coca-Cola, which company do you think he may choose? Isabella? I'd say Coca-Cola because in the book he said <clears throat> that people are always going to buy like um soft drinks. So yeah, it's like safer. Yeah, great, great Isabella. Um, so I think like when he has to choose between the video and Coca-Cola, he may choose the Coca-Cola company because with the Coca-Cola company, um, he, 
one thing he said is like anybody can run the Coca-Cola company because it's it's a really pretty simple company. And like if the manager makes a mistake, like for example, he changes the design of the Coca-Cola can to pink. Um, and like even if the customers may not like it that much, that may not result in um a really big loss. And even if it does result in like a tiny loss, um, the Coca-Cola company can change it in time and it won't result in a, a big loss. Meanwhile, if like, um, like, for example, if the manager of NVIDIA decides to go into the wrong direction, for example, um, when they're making like computer chips, um, maybe they're like, um, maybe they're like, um, do not focusing on a new trend that may result in big losses. And then by the time they realize that, it's too late to catch up because it's a really competitive and complex industry. Um, so do you guys agree with these opinions? Because honestly, I think there's like both sides of this argument. For example, you may not agree with Peter Lynch. You may prefer a fine company with excellent management in a highly competitive and complex industry. Because, you know, there's both sides of the argument. Um, some people, they might say, they might disagree with Peter Lynch, or they might say that um, with a fine company with excellent management, even though if it's in a highly competitive industry, if it really has really good management and it's a fine company, it may outperform other companies and make them bankrupt. Um, kind of like what happened to with Apple, for example. There was one. There once was a lot of smartphone makers, but they all went bankrupt. Um, um, and then right now, Apple and Samsung, I think, are like the main companies that make those smartphones. Maybe just one or two really niche companies. Um. So, do you guys agree with Peter Lynch's opinions, or do you disagree with them? Honestly, there's not like a right or wrong answer. As I said before, it's important to treat like an author's idea crit ideas critically, especially when you're reading a book on on the stock market. Because again, um, like there's many different opinions. There's no exact right or wrong, and it's important to like use critical thinking and like um analyze each idea and decide if you like it or not, or if you use it. So are you guys following me, by the way? Okay. And it's okay, most of these questions are- um, So I kind of agree. Like, um, I like his point where it says like, because it's like, if you make a mistake, it won't like do like really big harm. Like you like, it won't be like really, you won't like, the stock price won't get like really less for like in not a really high co competitive, but like, um, if it's like has really good management, as you said, then I think it still can be a good company and a good buy. Yeah, excellent, Chloe. That's like a really um, those that's like a really um, great idea. Um, Isabella. Um, I agree with Peter Lynch because I do think it's a good idea to start with like safer company like companies or stocks. But I feel like as you go on and you get like maybe more experience, you could try out like um, the highly competitive, like a fine company. But yeah, I choose safety. Yeah, amazing, Isabella. Um, so yeah, there's not an exact right or wrong answer. And sometimes when you're reading these books about the stock market, you can choose to like merge or combine different authors' ideas together or your own ideas or you can choose to just follow the authors or to use your own idea. So question number two, any idiot can run this business is one characteristic of a perfect company. So Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett both said the same sentence. Why do they think this is an important characteristic of a perfect company? And I think we talked about this a little bit before, like in the, in like the previous problem. Chloe, wait, wait a second. Sorry, Chloe, I'm not gonna call on you this time because um you've already answered a lot. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna call on someone else. Hmm. Wait, Audrey. Um, so he, the, the second question. Um, do you have an like do you have an opinion? Um so like 
why do you think um any entity can run this business? Why do you think that's an important characteristic of a perfect com of a perfect company? Audrey? Okay, fine. And then okay, then I can call on someone else. Um Chris, let's just blend. Okay, Valencia. Um, I think it's also part of Peter Lynch's, um, where he would pick the media, the mediocre, with the uh, where he would pick the humdrum company with mediocre management and a simple-minded industry with no competition. Um, because we don't, we don't, um, more people would like get the company and understand it better instead of like some high-tech computer science and AI stuff. And um, we want it like they probably want it to be simple, and then simple and like people will be more interested in it because it's easier to understand. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good idea, Valencia. Um, um, does anyone else have like another idea of this question? Okay, so as I said before, I'm um, Daniel. I think that any any idiot that can run this business means that um if any idiot that can run the business it means that it's very simple and it's very easy to understand. But if not any idiot can run this business, that means it's very it's not that simple and it takes more time to understand how to operate it. Yeah, excellent, Daniel. Um, so. One reason they think this is an important characteristic, but you guys like have really interesting ideas too. Um, so one reason they think Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett think um this is an important characteristic is that um with a business where any idiot can run, um it um like if some it's pretty simple, um, and like if like the manager or CEO makes a mistake, it won't result in a big loss for the company. It won't or it may not result in in like a loss at all sometimes. Um, um so that's a really important characteristic of a perfect company. It shows that company is pretty stable. Um so uh, is anyone like does anyone have any questions about this so far? It's okay. It's okay if you have any questions. Okay. So according to Peter Lynch, and uh, so why is it terrific if a company has a dull business and a boring name? Chloe? It's like terrific because like not many people like go like hot run it. Like not many people go if it has like names like Microsoft and it does like famous big names because not everyone like will be interested. And then like if not everyone's hot, you can like find uh you can you can find around the company you can like maybe earn a lot of money from it. Yeah, amazing, Chloe. Um it's well Peter Lynch thinks it's terrific if a company has a dull business and a boring name, because it may be a very good company with good earnings, but like Wall Street may not like follow it or like buy buy it buy shares of it immediately if it sounds really boring or dull or anything until like they find out that the stock has like gone up a lot or the company is a really 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 good company so um if a company sounds pretty dull um you know it may not be actually dull um you may be able to buy it at a good price um for like this company um or you may find it's kind of a little bit unvalued like undervalued and you may be able to buy it at a good price so question number four why is it good for investors if a company is buying back its stocks and like Valencia? um because it means that the company it like it like believes in believes in itself and thinks it can do good. Yeah, interesting, Valencia. Um I guess that's like one part. Um anybody else?
So it's usually pretty good for investors if a company is buying back its stocks for many reasons. I'm just going to list two right now. Um, number one, it shows the company is in a good financial situation. Because if a company like has trouble with its like finances, then where would it get the money and the time or like the intention the intention to buy back its own stocks? Um, it wouldn't like have that money. It's like usually if a company has extra money, it's gonna buy back its own stocks. Um also like and most importantly, like it's good for investors. Um because I'm gonna use an example. Let's say you invest in a company. The company makes one hundred dollars a year, and it has one hundred shares. Okay, really small company, but anyways, if it has if it makes one hundred one hundred dollars a year and it has one hundred shares, that means like for one share every year it will earn one dollar, right? But now let's say the company is doing pretty well and it's and it buys back fifty percent of its stock like 50 of its stocks so now it there's only 50 shares of the company in the market and its earnings stay the same so it earns 100 dollars um per year so let's say originally you earned one share of the company um back then like one share of the company earned one dollar every year right but now there's only 50 shares and the company earns 100 dollars a year so you guys can do the math how much how how much money does one share make now every year? If there's only fifty shares and the company makes one hundred dollars a year, anybody you can just blurt it out. Okay, fine. You divide like how much the company earns, which is one hundred dollars, by the amount of shares, which is fifty. And so that's like $2 per share. So why are you share of the company originally was like earned $1 a year? Now it may earn $2 a year, right? Um, so that's really good for investors. Um, so question number five, why is it not like good for investors if a company is owned by most funds and receives a lot of attention like eh. Anyways, and received a lot of attention from stock analysts. Isabella? Um, this is like kind of like one of those hot stocks that are in like competitive markets. And it usually um it goes up really fast and you may earn a lot of money. But if you buy it at the top when like you finally hear about it from the stock um analysts then you'll lose a lot of money when it goes back down because like, for example, there's um, a new better iPhone coming out. Yeah, great Isabella. Um, so um, it's not very good for investors if a company is owned by many funds and stock analysts on Wall Street, because um, that may mean that the company um, is overvalued in its price or it's like P ratio is really, really, really high. So that may not be a very good thing unless its earnings suddenly drastically increase, like increase a lot. Um, because um, like as I said before, um the stock is like overpriced or and it's like it may and its price may not be very good, or it's or like um like then some investors on Wall Street may finally realize that and sell off their shares, which will make the stock go down a lot. Um, so it's usually not very good for investors. But as I said before, again, like a lot of these questions are based on Peter Lynch's idea, own opinions. And again, it's, it's very important if you are like reading like a book about the stock market to like, use critical thinking on the ideas and decide if you like it or not, or like if you want to use it or not. Okay, so for each of the following company attrib attrib attributes, point out whether it is a favorable attribute for its investors. Um, so you may not agree with Peter Lynch's opinions or not. Um, so number one, a company's business is collecting and processing citizens' daily waste. 
Is that a favorable attribute? Do you think? Do you think that's a favorable attribute or not? Attribute, attribute, and you can just split it out. What type of condition? Um, I think uh, I think it'd be like a favorable attribute if you wanted something safe. Yeah, um, interesting, Isabella. Um, does anybody else have an opinion? And you should have an opinion, though, because it's like you, you're not. Or it's like... Okay, so now let's move on to question to number two. A company with the name of fashionnet.com, like its name is, has a .com, do you think that's like a favorable attribute or not? Or if it's just like a normal piece of random information that doesn't like say anything? Um, for me, in my opinion, I don't think it's very favorable because I think it, it like, it's a scam or something because most stocks don't have, like, dot .com in it or something. Yeah, excellent, um, Isabella. Um, well, usually it's not a very favorable attribute. Yes, it may be a scam. But mostly, if it has fashion and .com, that's usually not very favorable attribute. Because uh, you can just look at the name. If it's fashionnet.com, um, like fashion, with fashion, like fashion, like for one month, it may be this fashion. And the next month, fashion might change. So usually, um, a company that deals with fashion isn't a very good, might not be a very good, a very stable fashion a very stable company. Besides, if it has a .com at the end and it's just like the name, not the URL URL of a website or something, usually that's not a very good company. Um, it may be a scam or anything. So number three, a healthcare company spinoff from General Electric Corporation. Gee, is that a favorable attribute or not favorable attribute? Or is it just like a piece of random information? I think it's a favorable attribute because in the book, um, Peter Lynch said that um spinoffs were like a good like um they were good yeah yeah Valencia does anyone know why though okay usually the healthcare company spinoff from General Electric Corporation should be a pretty good company or else General Electric might not let it. Like spin off from it, cause like usually General Electric like owns a lot of shares, like your managers own a lot of share from that healthcare company spin off. So, like, if they let it spin off from like the big company and like they they're owning a lot of shares of it, that may mean that they think the company is is promising, and since they're owning a lot of individual shares of it, um, they may think it will be very successful. Um, so question number four. Well, not question number four. Like number four, Nvidia stocks owned by many is Nvidia stocks owned by many institutions and discussed almost every week in Money Show and CNBC. Is that a favorable attribute? Not favorable attribute attribute, or like just like normal. And this is like um due to your own opinions. Like many many of these are like um like um. You may answer like many of these may be um about your own opinions. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's not um the most favorable attribute because if it's like talked about almost every week um in CNBC, then probably a lot of people like it's like what another like hot um. Uh, what was it called? Stock, yeah. So then it like it probably went up really fast, and you're gonna lose money in like um a short amount of time. So it's not that favorable. Yeah, amazing, Isabella. Um. Um. Does anyone else have another opinion? I think maybe because it's like um. It gets quite a lot of um, like popularity, or like people don't know about it. So then it can. Hmm? Yeah. 
yeah, um, great lens, yeah. So honestly, I wouldn't really count this as a favorable attribute. I would say an unfavorable attribute, um, because this shows that Nvidia may be like really um, like it may be a really hot stock and may not, and like, do you guys remember the cock like Peter Lynch's cocktail observation? Where he said, like, if everybody is paying attention to one stock, then that stock may not, like, fare very well in the future. Well, this may mean that, like, if NVIDIA is, like, has a lot of attention, that may mean that it may not be a very good, like, it might, like, decrease, like, its price might decrease in the future. So, number five, a company in the AI industry. Favorable, unfavorable, or just, like, normal? Um, I would say unfavorable because in the AI industry, um, for example, if you were like Nokia and you just made a new iPhone, if Apple came out and got like an even better iPhone, then Nokia would go down. So it's very competitive and I don't think if um, it's a very favorable uh, trait or thing. Wait. Audrey, can you stop annotating unless, like, it's, like, something that needs annotating? Okay. Anyways, so, I would count. Does anyone else have, like, another another opinion or anything? There's not an exact but wrong answer to this. Anyone? You can just blurt it out if you want. My chat. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Anyways, um, so um, it depends honestly for number five. Like, if you know a lot about the AI industry, then like, well, like if it's a good company with good fundamentals in the AI industry and like excellent management it may be a good company but it honestly depends or if you know a lot about like AI and stuff that particular industry um like you may you like and you like analyze it and you think it's a good company then you and maybe a favorable attribute but this honestly is just mostly a piece of random information you can't really do a lot about it some people think if it's in the AI industry, it's good. Some people think it's bad. Um, number six, a company that is the only company allowed to provide um, building materials for Texas. Um, I would say favorable, like by a lot, because um, t these are like the people in Texas, they can only buy this stock because it's the only thing for Texas. And even if you didn't live in Texas, you should also buy it because um, the people who are in Texas, if they bought this stock, um, it probably is worth a lot of money. So you would get the money too. Yeah, amazing, Isabella. Um, if it's like the only, if this company is the only company allowed to provide building materials for Texas, I would say that would be a very good com, a very 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 good company, or like a, an amazing company, unless it's like financial, um, its management is terrible. Um, I would say this is a good attribute. Um, because this company has a really is a really niche company. Or like it has a good mold. Um, because it's like the only company allowed to provide building materials for Texas, even if it raises its price a lot. Or like it's a, it has an unreasonable price for the building materials. Texas will still have to buy from that company. Um, so. Number six, a company's products are used by people daily. Is this a good side, bad side, or normal? I say that's a good side because that means people would continue to buy it. Yeah, amazing, Valencia. Um, um, if a company's products are used by people daily, that shows it, it's like a pretty good company because people have to like buy from it a lot. Yeah, excellent. Um, number eight, a company benefits from technologies, good, bad, or normal. Okay, am I start calling them people? Um, how about Kai? Wait, which question again? 
eight. Um, I think it's favorable because like many people, people use technology and uh, becoming a very big thing. Yeah, great, Kai. Um, I would also say it depends. Usually, it's a pretty good thing that it benefits from technologies. Um, but I would say it's a pretty good thing, but it's mostly like mesh. It doesn't say a lot about the company. Um, but yeah. Number nine, a company CEO bought 10K worth of stocks yesterday. Good, bad, or like normal? Um, I feel like for me, I wouldn't really, I mean, it might be like a random piece of information or something because some people might be like, oh, this company, they have so much money that this CEO bought $10,000 worth of stocks or something. But then other people might be like, this CEO is unreliable. He is throwing around his money like it's worth nothing, so you shouldn't buy the stock. So, That's right. Yeah. So, Isabella, this is kind of like, and I meant like ten k worth of its own stock. Yes. Oh, okay. Then it, it's a good trade. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Amazing, Isabella. And does anyone else have another opinion? By the way, um, I'm trying to call on like different people. Um, Alicia. Okay, I would say. Uh, well, it's better than the CEO selling its stocks. Yeah, that's true, I guess. It's bit like if it's sold stock if a company CEO sold um the stocks of that company, then that would be like a major bad sign because even that CEO would think um the company is gonna like um the company's stock price is gonna decrease. Um honestly, I would say number nine is like just a random piece of information. Cause look, a company CEO has a lot of money. Like ten k to a CEO of a company may be just like like, depending on how big the company is. Let's say the company is pretty big, ten k might not be like a lot of money. So um, this may may be a favorable attribute. But honestly, I will just consider it a piece of random information, because it's not like ten k is that much to the CEO. If they bought like one hundred k, then that might be a favorable attribute. This may just be like a semi-favorable attribute, but you can't really like um tell a lot of stuff from it. Um, so because like the company CEO isn't like buying that much of its stocks. Might be a good sign, but you know. Broadcoms number 10, Broadcoms two directors bought 1,000 and 11,000 shares at the price of around $850 to $870 in last month. In the last month, good sign, bad sign, or normal sign? Anyone? Okay, let's see. Oliver, do you think number 10 is a good sign, bad sign, or like just a normal sign? I would think it's a good sign because they bought a lot of their own stock. Yeah, excellent, um, Oliver. Honestly, I would agree that it would be a pretty good sign. Um, it would be a really good sign because number one, eight hundred fifty dollars to eight hundred seventy dollars is a really high price for Broadcom, like for basically any stock. That's a really inflated price. Not to mention Broadcom's two directors bought a lot of shares, like 1,000 and 11,000, and that's two directors. So two directors bought a lot of shares of Broadcom at a really inflated price. That may mean that that is like maybe a major good sign, like that, broad, that Broadcom might do really well in the future because it's two directors, maybe really like um 
um, confident in Broadcom. Number 11, a company is buying back shares. They're selling bad sign or normal. Number 11, okay, let's see. Does anyone have an opinion for number 11? Or is, is this like a good sign, bad sign, or a normal sign? Honestly, a lot of these are open-ended. Like, there's no right or wrong answer, I guess. It depends on your own opinion, like anything of the stock market. Okay, so now just answer. Honestly, myself, I would think it's a good sign because um, a, a company buying back shares may mean that the company is in a good financial situation and that it has like enough money to buy back its shares and stuff. Okay, number 12, a company believed to be the next NVIDIA. This is like the ticker sign for NVIDIA, I think. It, is that a good sign for the company, bad sign or a normal sign, do you think? Let's see. Is Bella? Uh, for eleven. For well, number twelve. Oh, okay. Um, I don't really think so because it's believed to be, so it's not like that good yet. And also, it's probably another one of those like hot stocks that will be good, but then they'll crash down really hard. Yeah, amazing, Isabella. Um, usually, I think uh, this is an observation by Peter Lynch. Usually, when like a company is believed to be the next Nvidia or like a big company, usually like um, it won't do very well. Of course, there's no exact logical reason for this or like psychology or anything. Like Peter Lynch said, it's just an observation he made during his like, like his like experience in the stock market usually when a company is believed to be the next nvidia it may not actually be the next nvidia um so yeah chapter nine stocks i avoid so number one why doesn't peter lynch buy the hardest stock in the hardest industry or why do you think peter lynch doesn't buy the hardest stock in the hardest industry oh yeah by the way are you guys following me so far Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Valencia. Oh yeah, by the way, do I need to like talk slower sometimes? It's good. Oh. Um uh according to a book, Peter Lynch says that um the hardest stocks you in the hardest industries they usually go up really fast, but then they can go like down, like um they can lose money. Just as fast. Yeah, excellent, Valencia. Um, so yeah, Peter Lynch doesn't really buy the hardest stock in the hardest industry because usually number one, these stocks are kind of like overpriced. Like that's what he thinks. I mean, he thinks the hardest those stocks are overpriced and like they're pretty volatile. Like um, as soon as Wall Street like thinks this the stock isn't very good, like a lot of people will sell it and then like it will result in like like a huge decrease in like the price and that can like mean like like if you buy the stock at the top of its like at like its highest point and you sell it at its lowest point or you sell it at a really low point you'll lose a lot of money uh so why question number two why does why doesn't peter lynch buy the stock or just build this the next something honestly i think i already said this but okay isabella um, it's basically the same thing as like the last slides, number 12. Um, he's more of like a safe person, so he wouldn't buy something that is believed to be something. He wants it to be like sure of something, and it's probably like uh, a unreliable stock. Interesting, Isabella. Um, Peter Lynch, like, I think, um, I think, 
like the main reason he stated in the book that he didn't buy the stock which is viewed as the next something is that he observed that like usually when a stock is believed to be the next something it actually isn't and it's like um it decreases in price and or anything but this is like an observation peter lynch made during his office years as i said during his years of experience um there's not exact he didn't state an actual logical reason for this it's just like his opinion okay so like this isn't like the golden rule of like the stock market or investing or anything okay Number three, Skyworks is a company making chips for many smartphone companies. The table below shows its revenue contributed by its customers. Note that Apple contributes 50, like 60 percent of Skyworks revenue. So like Apple is like its main customer and it contributes 60 percent of Skyworks revenue. Considering that Apple is a great company or like an amazing company, do you think Peter Lynch will buy the stock? like by Skyworks, assuming the financial fundamentals of Skyworks are flawless. What, and why, why not? Isabella? Um, he said in the book that he believed stocks that were flawless and perfect and amazing would probably go down faster. Um, and he said, like, ones that were metacore and simple would probably stay longer. So um, I don't think he would buy the stock. Um, but then I feel like Apple is, like, you know, a well-known good company. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, excellent, Isabella. Alicia? Um, it's because Skyworks is relying mostly on Apple. Yeah. So um, honestly, I don't think Peter Lynch would would buy like any shares of Skyworks or buy a lot of shares of Skyworks, because Skyworks is mainly dependent on Apple, as you can see from this chart. It depends on Apple for sixty percent of its revenue, and the other forty. What? Okay, the other forty percent are like unclassified or like other companies. So if Apple decides that another company, like in, besides Skyworks, like makes better chips or makes like like less expensive chips, and like decides to like you like go to another company for the chips, then Skyworks will lose sixty percent of its revenue. That would be like a huge like decrease in that would be like a huge decrease in its earnings or revenue and in stock price too. So I don't think Skyworks is a very stable company. Of course, there's also like, um, uh, of course, Apple is a great company, but Skyworks is mostly mainly relying on Apple rather than like other companies. So, um, it's not extremely like, like, um, it's not an extremely reliable company. Um, question number four. Advanced Micro Devices Inc. is a company making chips for smartphones, computers, and data centers. Can you like can you guess Peter Lynch's opinion of this company based on its name? Anyone? Because I think um Peter Lynch mentioned Isabella. Um, I feel like he would say this name is boring so that he would buy it. Interesting, Isabella. Okay. Um. Does anyone else have another opinion? Anyone else? Okay. So honestly, Peter Lynch said before that um usually he doesn't really buy comp uh, shares of companies who have advanced or like in their names or X in their names or dot com or like if it's like an acronym that's really hard to understand for example in a video or something that that doesn't make sense um um so um honestly though like as i said before it's important to like treat um like like these books like like critically and to like 
um decide based on your own opinions honestly because um even if i come because like some people like um um like even if a company has advanced in its name it may be a really 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 good company um or it may be a good company and or it may not be extremely overpriced um so you can't really like solely depend on Peter Lynch's opinions unless you like uh, totally agree with them um like sometimes like you you can like choose whether you're you know, like uh, on it or not like if you agree with Peter Lynch great if you don't agree with him then great too honestly oh yeah fun fact you know you know the CEO of advanced micro devices is like is like a Thai is a Taiwan girl right that's usually like the CEO of advanced micro devices is a Taiwanese girl so that's like really rare because usually like like Asian or, like Asian girls especially um aren't CEOs of like big companies like technologically advanced companies like any companies at all um and like this company I think is worth like paying attention to sometimes because um um I think there was like this report about it like it um trying to make um like computer chips too um so like Sometimes, even though you're not buying the stock, you may want to pay attention to some stocks Um, because some people say that advanced micro devices is going to be competing with NVIDIA or anything. Um, so, yeah, good fact. And Peter, now let's move on to the questions for chapter 10. In Peter Lynch's opinion, what makes a company valuable? There's a lot of things that actually make a company valuable. How about let's change it? In your opinion, what makes a company valuable? Anyone? You don't have an opinion on what makes a company valuable? So you're just gonna like sit there and randomly like, like get a list of random companies and pick one? Or throw dots at the board to decide? Valencia? Um, I think like basically a company that's growing. If like um like based on like the type of um Peter Lynch's like companies, I wouldn't like really pick a fast grow or a slow grower, but probably like um a company that's in the middle but it's still growing over time. I would, I would like invest into that. Like a stalwart? Yeah, great Valencia. That's a really interesting opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, Daniel, of course, like these are our opinions. So um, you guys shouldn't be afraid of sharing because there's like no right or wrong exactly. Um, today is it's your own. So I would choose a company that has a good pH because if it doesn't, if it has a very high one, that means it's overvalued. So yeah, and I also also make sure I want it to be a company that grows, but I don't care how fast it grows. Hmm. Cool. I'm um, great, Daniel. Also, what's a pH? Anyways, um, so um. And Peter Lynch's opinion, what makes a company valuable is like its earnings, like if it's gonna increase a lot, or if like you can predict like it's gonna increase a lot, or its earnings are steady and steadily growing and stuff. Um, um, so question number two, what's a PE ratio? And like you guys might need to know this because Isabella. Um, uh, I think it's a nickname for the relationship between like the price of uh, a stock and then how much that company earns. Yeah, great. It is Bill. Um, um, a P ratio to just like provide a quick summary is like a price over earnings ratio. So you calculate it by dividing the price over earnings. 
it shows like how much a company is valued or like usually a P ratio below 20 is is a pretty good PE ratio. Um and it also shows like how many years you need to like how many years it takes to earn back your original investment. So for example, if you if you have a if you buy a stock in a company that has a that has a I don't know a price of three hundred and its P ratio is ten. That means in ten years, um, the earnings will be like three hundred dollars for that one share, and you earn back like the money you originally paid. So you basically get a free stock for free. Um, so number three, the P of Amazon is one of one hundred two as of October twenty fourth and twenty four two thousand twenty three. So according to its P, how many years do you need to earn back your initial investment? Anyone else? Its P ratio is 102. You just need to answer the first part of this question. Okay, great, Alicia. One or two? Yeah. Um, that's the correct answer. Um, it would since the P of Amazon is one or two, like one hundred two, it would take one hundred and two years to earn back like the money, which honestly I think is a little like like if the earnings continue or if it's like price continues like that, or it's growth continues, it would take one hundred two years. Um, so you may be wondering why do people invest in Amazon if its P ratio is that high and if it takes that long to like to like pay back your original investment? Um, because some people believe that like the earnings of Amazon, or, like its price will go up a lot or change and like grow a lot um in the future. Um, so they may be willing to invest in an overpriced Amazon. So using the internet and Google and like a website or any websites I mentioned previously. How many years do you need to earn back your initial investment on Tesla? You can just search the P ratio, honestly, and you get it. Oh, wait, Alicia, did you get 66? Okay. Um, great, Alicia. Um, I, I don't, I haven't actually searched up the initial investment, but I think that's about it. So number four, on high P ratios, what's the warning given by Peter Lynch? Like Peter Lynch talk about like for stocks with high P ratios, like there's usually like a warning. Like he gave a warning. Does anyone know what the warning is? Okay, it's okay. Like if you really forget anything, you can look at the book, or, like you can think of one. Or like yeah. Daniel? That means that the stock price is overpriced. Um, yeah, great. interesting. Great, Daniel. Um, he did say that, but it's also another warning, though. Yeah. Okay, you know, because this is not very specific. Anyways, so Peter Lynch, like, um, he said that for a company with a high P ratio, it must have, like, incredible earnings like it must have really 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 high earnings or like a really high growth rate to justify the high price or like the high p ratio it's been given so if it has a really high p ratio in the future it will its earnings will need to like suddenly increase by a lot in order to justify the high p ratio so but usually like for a lot of for a lot of companies that won't happen and that might not necessarily happen because for example for apple 
um, even if it reduces its cost by a lot, or like it expands into new markets, or like like does something else, or it makes its earnings increase, it's still really hard to make its earnings increase, and it might not really happen because there's only that much smartphones you can sell to people, like products you can sell to people. And so usually for most companies, um, um, they won't like they can't drastic they can't like suddenly increase the earnings or like grow a lot. So question number five, when interest rates increase, do you think the market will the market P ratio go up or down? Or the general P ratio of the stocks or the stock market will go will it go up or down? Anyone? Okay. So, um, According to the book and many other books, um, this is kind of like a fact. When interest rates increase, like in banks or stuff, and they pay more to like lend your money to them, usually people like, cause banks are usually safer, right? Usually people will like stop investing in the stock market that much and like like in like put their money in banks, or, like other or bonds or other places. Um. Uh, like if the interest rates increase, so then um people don't will not buy as much stocks um so the market p and so subsequently the price might go down like if they if they're selling stocks or anything so usually the market p ratio will go down. Um. Question number six: What are ways the company increases its earnings? That that the company can increase its earnings. Does anyone know? Um, Peter Lynch, he had like, um, he, um, like, I think in a book, we described five types, like five basic ways a company can increase its earnings. You can just like say one if you know one. Cause like, there's five, but you can just say one. Um, yeah, and you can just blurt it out. Honestly, just a lot of ways that a company can increase its earnings. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. So there are five basic ways that a company can like increase its earnings. It can reduce the cost of like like of like producing a product or service. Um and so like they have a higher return. Um they can um they can like they can raise prices. Like if for example, if Let's say there's a company that supplies like most of the building materials for taxes, right? And you have to buy from that company. Well, that company can then like increase prices and we'll still have to buy from that company. So that's another way to increase its earnings by like increasing prices. Like as long as like you're sure, like as long as the like, customers keep on buying from that company. Um, it can expand into new markets. It can sell more of its products to the old markets. For example, instead of sell, instead of like, um, persuading people to um own one iPhone per person, maybe there's a new trend in people are now buying two iPhones per person, even though you don't need as much that much iPhones. Um, or like you can like, like revitalize, like improve, or you can shut down, or you can like sell off a losing um, operation. So for example, if you have a big company and like it has a smaller subset where, where it sells like so a product that doesn't make money, it can either like improve that subset, like that that tiny part of the company and like try to like improve the, the, the product or like you can sell it off or you can like just close 
you can close it or dispose of it. Um, so now let's do a case study. Um, um, just like a, a link to Google spreadsheets. Um, and like last time I asked you guys to like, um, to like, um, um, like put your portfolio's return in that spreadsheet. So now let's compare each portfolio's return. And I may ask some people to share. So I'll paste the link in the chat. Okay, so here's the link to the spreadsheets. Can you guys like click on it? I'll share my screen. Oh, I already shared my screen, okay. So let's see, some people filled it out for September 22, some people didn't. Um, so um, let's look at the balance. It seems like, oh, Kai, you got $438, of course. Oh, you started out with 434. Okay. So some people put this out, some people didn't. It seems some of you lost some money, right? But that's okay. Recently, the stock market hasn't been very good. Um, like recently, um, around like August, September, October, um, it's, um, the stock market hasn't been very good recently. And basically, every stock has been like, um, like not an money for example QQQ has been down like 10 percent since august i think um so i'm just gonna call some people i'll call first and livia livia so um is this like your portfolio for stock okay can you like explain like what well, can you like pull up your portfolio actually? Can everybody pull up their portfolios? And does actually does anyone want to share like the portfolios and like um like what they found, like like earned the money, what lost the money, like what earned the money and like what like contributed to their losses in the portfolio, which stock um they or bond or stuff they think was the best, etc. So, does anyone want to share? Okay, you know what, actually, today I just realized we we're a little over time. So, could you please this time remember to, like, um, like, pull out your balance for September 22 and also fill out the balance. And then, like, can you guys, like, make sure... Can you guys like pull up your portfolios later and maybe, um, you know, here's a, home, here's a piece of homework. Can you guys like create a, a really quick Google document or slideshow or presentation, like really quick um, about your portfolio, like which stocks like gained money, which stocks like earned money, which stocks lost money, which stock was the most profitable, um, your, your, your total balance, whether you lost money or earned money. Although I think it's, most of you lost, like earn money, or sorry, last money, but that's pretty normal. Um, because the stock market hasn't been that good recently. Um, and yeah. So I'll post some of like um the details on the homework. So it's just a really quick homework. Just create like a Google document or like write it down on paper or something about which about your what the portfolio is like. Um. Although we can already see it, um, which stock earn or bond earned you the most money, um, which stock lost you the most money, um, which stock do you, like if you think you will use that portfolio again, like invest in that portfolio, or like if you will invest in a, one or two stocks, um, in that portfolio, or invest in some stocks in the portfolio, um, etc. Or which stocks you didn't like you regretted buying, etc. So that's it. Um thank you guys for your time. Does anyone have any questions? No.